Battlefield Campion by Mex D Squadron 22 SAS. Don't worry about me, let's get it on. Yes, I was in the SAS. Yes, I've been on television. But yes, I've also had some major problems in my life. It don't matter if he's no good at maths, or it don't matter how much money he's got in his pocket, because you've got to wear exactly the same as he has. Oh, God, I've got to try not to get emotional, Ed. Just make sure you save one for me and, and slap me in the head before I go, like, do you know what I mean? I've just blown your marksmanship principles out of the water! Phil, how are you, brother? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I'm good. <laughs> mate, this chat's been long, long overdue. We've uh, uh, um, been really, really looking forward to this. And uh, gosh, there's probably been so many people asking for you to come on the show. Right. Um, okay. uh, how's the book going, mate? Yeah, all right. I mean, it's the paperback release. The hardback didn't go as well as I would have hoped for, to be honest, but the idea of the book really was as a mental health tool, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't as a, it wasn't as a sort of like Phil get rich quick plan. Do you know what I mean? It was a, I wanted to do something which, which showcased my mindset and some of the things that went on about it. Cause when you look at a bloke like me, you go, well, oh, yeah, well, yeah, look at that hard bastard and all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's not right. It's, it, you know, I, I want people to understand that there's a lot more to the makeup of a person like myself. And that there's a lot more you can learn from a person like myself, do you know what I mean, in your own well-being. Yes, mate. And we have learned from you, Phil. I mean, even in that little bit you did with Bear Grylls the other day, I, I loved it. When, oh, God, I've got to try not to get emotional here. But when, when you said about your, you know, your, your tough childhood, but that's in the past, we move on. Um, you know, this is, the, I think, what a lot of, people who've experienced trauma need need to hear, don't they, you know? Yeah, I think, look, look, everything on the human body is designed to move it forwards, all right? Everything, the way, you, the way your bones are constructed, the way the eyes are on the front of your head, everything's designed to move it forwards. And I've always, that's sort of been my thing in life. Go forwards, go forwards, keep going, do you know what I mean? Don't, you learn from your mistakes, fair enough, but don't keep dwelling on them, don't keep going back, don't sit on them, don't bring them up all the time, move on. Yeah, I think you're right. I think when we're in that mode, we're in victim mode. And if you're in victim mode, you're not grateful for this life, are we? And if you're not grateful, it's a that's a, not a good place to start. That, and negativity generates negativity. Do you know what I mean? And it it, it, it tumbles, it tumbles downwards really quickly. You know, mm. and you've only got you've only got to have a, you've only got to have a, a, a tiny bit of positivity. And I'm I'm talking, you know, I, I, I tell the story about when my dad used to beat me up, and there was no no positives in that at all until I realised that if I stopped wriggling. He stopped hitting me. And then I had a small positive to think, well, I can control this now because I can stop him hitting me by, by stopping screaming and wriggling. And mm -hmm. it worked. And <laughs> I still got a beating, but I didn't get as bad a beating. And in my own mind, I'd controlled the situation, so I had the tiniest of wins. But that tiny win taught me for the rest of my life that, you know, you might be that low you can get under a snake's belly with a top hat on, but there's still a win to be had somewhere. Do you know what I mean? While well, there's, well, there's, well, there's air in your lungs, there's a win to be had somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Turn ev every negative in into a positive. <laughs> and you've certainly done that with your life. Try me hardest to do that. Yes. No, you've done a good, good, good job, Phil. Thank you. And um, it's a funny thing with the books, because I have this being an author myself and many of my um, forces guests have written books that the bringing out, they still bring out the hardback before the paperback, don't they? Yeah, I, I don't know what look. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the re the reason behind what these people do. Do you know what I mean? I've got no idea. But the, you know, my sales usually increase once the paperback comes out, and I think that's down to people's pounds and pockets, isn't it? You get the same read, the same pictures, half the price, didn't you? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it from a publishing perspective. Oh, I'm just sort of sort my screen out here. It it don't make sense because when that book's released, you want maximum maximum exposure. So you want people that can't afford a hardback or they don't even want a hardback. They just, I think, give it, give everybody it at the same time and let them make them minds up. I think publishers yeah, don't. Yeah, I think you're right. You know. I think you're right. Throw, throw, them the lot, throw the lot out there. Do you know what I mean? Because the people are going to buy hardbacks and buy the hardback anyway. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. Do, I do the cruise liners and I've very often got hardbacks and paperbacks. 
If they want a hardback, they'll have a hardback. They'll pay another extra fiver for it. If they don't, they won't. They won't pay the fiver. That's their choice, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And uh, Phil, we talk a lot on this show about, uh, I'll, I'll just say trauma. You know, um, a lot of people have this impression that trauma for military is something that you've been in active service, you've seen something really horrible to your mate. And 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 I, I try to make people aware, no, I think a lot of us, we joined up with the damage. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. Certainly in my case, you know, I mean, I've seen quite a bit by the time I, I've reached forces. You know, I've been groomed by a paedophile. I've been beaten by my father. I've been bullied as a kid. Do you know what I mean? So there's all that sort of stuff. All goes into the makeup of you, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. And friends at home, you know, Phil's a shining example. I hope I do my best too to show you that, you know, once you get a grip of it, you then can use your life experiences for the better and, and create that. Um, and not, create just, not just for your benefit as well. You know, I, I, you know I've, I've got this role as champion of the cadet force. You know, they find it very, very useful for me to try and talk to youth in a way where I've been there, seen it, done it. Do you know what I mean? Now, they won't all listen to me because you've still got to make your own mistakes in some, in some cases. But some of them do listen to the stuff I've got to say. And some of them, you know, it, it turns them around a little bit. Yeah, And I think definitely. it's a credible source. It's the fact that you can say, yes, I was in the SAS. Yes, I've been on television. But yes, I've also had some major problems in my life. And this is how I overcame them. Do you know what I mean? And it's not all over. It's not, you don't give up at the first hurdle. You don't just go, oh, I've had a few problems. Boom, it's all over. The world's ending. It's, you know what I mean? It ain't that bad. You've still got oxygen in your lungs. There's still something you can do about it. You know, and I write in that book, in, in the book there, you know, I was locked up in a, in, a, in a shipping container in Togo, having just been told by the guard, you are definitely going to be executed at some stage. Do you know what I mean? Well, there's oxygen in my lungs. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> and the other thing as well is something that you say, Phil, today, it might not ring a bell with someone for another 20 years, but, but, but bang, then when it does, they'll go, I remember that nice bloke Phil said this 20 years ago, and I wasn't ready to listen to it then. But yeah. it's making sense now, and, and, and it helps to put the, the picture together. Yeah, some people don't acknowledge that they've got a problem even, do you know what I mean? Or they don't acknowledge that there's anything they can do about the problems. I'm a strong advocate, right? People say to you, People say to you, 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 you're mad if you talk to yourself. I say you're mad if you don't. Because when I look in the mirror at night, right, when I look in the mirror, that's the only person on this world I can't bluff. All right? I, I can't <laughs> tell that person a lie in that mirror. I can only tell him the truth because he knows. Do you know what I mean? So, and I, I swear now, right, I, when I got remanded in custody, I was in Winchester Prison, and one of the first things I did was catch myself in the eye in Winchester Prison. I looked in, I looked in, the, I looked in the mirror and I went, you are an absolute belter, son. Do you know what I mean? You absolute melt. What have you gone and done? <laughs> and I had this bizarre conversation with myself, a bit like sexy beast stuff. Do you know what I mean? When Don Logan's looking in the mirror going, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I've done that. And I was like, this actually works. I, I can see where I'm going with this a little bit. And I think acknowledging my own problems in myself there helped me to talk with other people about them when I got out. Yes. Yes. There's another film. What's uh, What's the chap's name? Um, the one that was in Scum and Sexy Beast, Ray Winston, isn't it? Ray Winston, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. know Ray? I've met him a couple of times, yeah, through Billy, actually. So, yeah, Billy introduced me to him. Yeah, but he, they did another brilliant film, and it's I wouldn't say it's underrated because it, it did really, really well, but with Kathy Burke, it was I think it was called Neil by Mouth. Um, and it's one of the first... Well, it's a really good British film, but it also highlights, like... Childhood trauma, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah re, re, any, anyone out there? If you watch N Neil by Mouth, the 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 the, the other star, and I always forget the guy's name, but he's been in lots of the sort of Essex Boys kind of films that have come out. And uh, there's one bit in it. He goes, "My dad shot my dog. He shot my fucking dog." And <laughs> it might just sound like a line in a film, but you can. You know, you think the fucking pain a child go can go through if their parents ain't got it sorted out. Yeah, um, no, it, it's it's incredible. But do you know what is else is incredible? How resilient children can be at that age as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How you know how they can they can manage to stumble through it because they don't have a lot of choice. Do you know what I mean? And this is a lot of thing, a lot of things I try and pass on to young people. 
just because you're going through a hard time, it doesn't mean you have to give up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because hard times come and go. And I've lived on a roller coaster. Do you know what I mean? I really have. I've been that high one minute, down there, and the next, up there. The, do you know what I mean? And I've somehow managed to muddle my way through, you know? And it's like, you know, I still haven't given up yet. There's still things I want to do. There's still ambition in me. I'm still burning away. You know, I'm 53 now, and there's still things I'm trying to do. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, I don't think that passion will ever go from me. And I think if people can learn... You don't even have to learn passion. It's there. But you've got to learn what you want. You've got to identify what you want from life. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And the other thing, uh, how many times do you hear a week someone goes, all right, Phil, yeah, I wanted to join the military, but my mum said no. (laughs) Yeah, 100 times. That's fine. And I do get a lot of that. I was going to do this. And the one I get quite a lot is I was going to do selection. You had your choice, you had the chance. Yeah. You, know what I mean? you didn't do it, just leave it there, park it now. It doesn't matter anymore, does it? You know, I was, I was going to play for England at football, but I was shit, so I couldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? So I'd love to have done it, but I didn't. I did something else. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can t- tell you safely, I wasn't going to do selection. It's too fucking hard. Uh, Bob, Bob Consiglio would just. He, Back then, he was, it, there was a weird thing you had to do. You had to leave the bootnecks and join the army and then apply for SAS. It was something... That's right, because it was he did it at a time when it wasn't UKSF. It was sort of like they were they and they, we were us. Do you know what I mean? And it was a, mm. a totally different entity. But now you can just cross-pollinate. You can do what you like now. Do you know what I mean? You can actually... You can go on selection as a trooper and ask to go to pool if you want to. Do you know what I mean? So, it's, yeah, mm. it's very much integrated now. Yeah. It's funny because I've had SBS guys on the show... And I'm expecting like the bootneck patter. You, 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 there's a kind of character, isn't there, for each forces? There's just, yeah. you know, the um, kind of archetypal or whatever the word is. And and but well, you get, they, they, got, they got they got their own language down there, haven't they? <laughs> yes. Well, they the their own Mar- language, don't they? And the Marines, being Navy, have got their whole f- lingo thing going on anyway. And that's but, right. Yeah, it's all scran and fredders and yeah, Harry Red Pigs. <laughs> and it's it's so it's weird when I talk to an SBS guy. I'm expecting him to be like from the bootnecks, but you you can sort of tell there's just a different, almost like a different ca- character. But I suppose the if you can all get on at the end of the day, That's it's it, the main mate. thing. Yeah, what, what what counts is what you do down the other end, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I'm getting at, Phil, I just could you say a word for people that I don't want people living their whole life thinking. Oh, if only I joined the military, or if only I, I say, leave it behind, leave it be. You know, the military. Yeah, like- I, I have a train of thought. Do it, do it now, or leave it alone. Do you know what I mean? It's just you've got you've got to make your mind up what you want to do because otherwise, you, and I, I'm guilty of this. You know, I came out of the military, I was chased around the circuit, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I opened doors, I sort of like half looked around, I didn't, and it's like it's a complete mess. You've got to try and make up in your own mind what you want to do. What do you want to do? And I remember a Sergeant Major told me on one of my on one of the first things I ever did, and he said, if you can find something you enjoy, Phil, you'll never work again for the rest of your life. Do you know what I mean? And that's very true. You know, find something you enjoy. Find something you want to do. I'm not saying there's going to be no hardship attached to that because there is. But I enjoy the hard times as much as I join the, uh, enjoy the easy times sometimes, you know, because it's what I want to do. And when people say, oh, the jungle was hard, it was extremely hard. It was extremely challenging. But I enjoyed it. It was great. I loved it. I learned something new every day. I did this. I did that. I did the other thing. I was cutting around like a like a proper soldier. Do you know what I mean? So if you were in the jungle and you didn't enjoy it, now would be a good time to stick your hand up and go, I'll tell you what, I've had enough of this. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's no pressure on anybody to do this sort of thing. It's it's a volunteer force. UKF selection, UKSF selection is volunteer from top to bottom. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He even says it on your medals, SAS in brackets, volunteer. Did uh, any of your jungle training come into play in Sierra, Le- Sierra Leone, Phil? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a typical, you know, in the planning of that operation. But even then, you know, a lot of the stuff we <laughs> a lot of the stuff we had written in the sort of like rule books as they were, went completely out the window on that operation, didn't they? You know, we, mm. we sort of like turned up in two great helicopters and slap back in the middle of the middle of the camp, made... Like God knows what noise getting in there and, you know, sorted it out that way. It That's typically within the spirit of the way the regiment does things. You know what I mean? It's not interested in, it, it's interested in the solution to the problem that it's got. It's not interested in, uh, well, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it that way, you've got to do it the other way. It's interested in, let's get this done. Do you know what I mean? And I think mm. 
that's one of the things I've taken from the regiment when I got out. You know, let's let's not look at this, that, and the other. Let's look at how we can get this problem done. Let's look at how we can fix something. Let's have a look at how we can make things work, as mm. opposed to oh, we can't do it because of that. We can't. You can spend your whole life making excuses, or you can spend your whole life doing stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I met up with a, a mate in the pub one night. I hadn't seen him for years and years, and we were in Belfast together. And 89 in Belfast was quite what you call a kinetic tour. There was lots of things going bang. Um, I'll say this story a lot, but Jock, who was tail end Charlie, so just beyond me on patrol, got shot three times. Um, yeah. um, bless him, he, he, he got up and finished the patrol, believe it or not, but that's a story for another day. But uh, I, I won't say his first name, but a chap called Veal, who I don't know if that name means something to you. Um, we, we shared a room together, Phil, and when I met him in the pub, I said, how's it going? He said, yeah, yeah I've gone, gone SB again. <laughs> I think he was always in and out. Of, I think he was at ML before he went, a mountain leader before he uh, oh, okay. um, joined SB. And he said, yeah, I just got back from Sierra Leone. <laughs> I said, what was it like? He said, fucking hell, mate. He said, when I was in Belfast, I thought this is soldiering. <laughs> he said, down there, it, it, it just said it was the Wild West, Chris. Absolutely insane. Absolutely yeah, insane. What, 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 what really, I mean, that was the first time I did anything major, major. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. And the thing that struck me immediately in that sort of like combat situation is how... Everything changes in perspective. Do you know what I mean? A pound isn't worth a pound anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's not worth anything, in fact. You're not going to buy anything for a pound in a situation like that. Are you? Do you know what I mean? It's no use to man or beast. You know, if, if, in terms of sort of like your own safety and your own thing, well, you, you're now in a, in a situation where the rules have completely changed. If I want to plunge something through your head, I'll plunge it through your head. At the same score, if you want to plunge something through mine, you'll plunge it through mine. Do you know what I mean? And the rules of these normal rules and constraints that we live in as normal people are completely gone completely gone. Do you know what I mean? There's no rules down there, is there at all? And that, that's, that's what I think, that's what really struck me really hard. It's like, they're, they're, actually, when a push becomes a shove, it is completely lawless. Even in Northern Ireland, once you've got into a sort of like firefight or, or, or if you were contacted or blown up, once you've gone through what you were taught, actually, it came straight back to normal really quickly, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? You were, you were governed. There was, a, you know, you can't, Phil, you can't go in that house and kick someone's head in. No, you can't. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, Sierra Leone, it, 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 the rules weren't there, you know. Obviously, you know you've got the you've got the Geneva Convention, and you know it, it, you you sort of like have those constraints. But the normal rules from which everyday life exists for us here aren't there anymore. Mm. And I I found that I found that so many different emotions about that. In some ways, I found it liberating. I thought, you know, this is great. <laughs> you know what I mean? In other ways, I thought this is actually wow. This is actually anything could happen to me here. Do you know what I mean? It's like. So there's, there's a lot of mixed emotion about stuff like that. Your body, your body in a typical operation like that goes through so many different feelings in one day. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, you're in the glad to be alive club if you come out the other side. There's the, the sort of like the, the bit before when you're sort of like, oh, you've got a little bit of disco leg perhaps on the helicopter. Do you know what I mean? Thinking about it. There's the, there's the bit where you're sort of like, you're absolutely fuming. You're going through. You're absolutely focused and dead set on your, your orders and thinking, what am I going next? Where am I going? You know, I had a lot of anger when I found out that, that, that Brad had been killed. I'm like, you bastards, give me another one. Like, do you know what I mean? Let me have someone else. Do you know, there's so many emotions in one day, but at the end of that day, you were absolutely... Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you go, when you talk about, and I've never really done it at, at that level, when you talk about these guys, you know, when I went to Syria and I went on that front line and these guys have been doing that for 48 days non-stop when I got there, 48 days, 48 days of that every day. Not being in the Glad to Be Alive club, perhaps at the end of it, do you know what I mean? Dealing with all sorts during the day, all those emotions. I mean, by the end of a stint on there, you were, you could probably say you'd been to work like, do you know what I mean? That's a proper stint, that, isn't it? Yes. And uh, Sierra Leone, it's, it, it's not just the, it's not just the attack, is it? You, I mean, it, 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 some serious stuff went down there. I mean, it, it, these... On the TV, they called them the West Side Boys, didn't they? To call them something else, actually, was probably more derogatory than than actually calling them what they wanted to be called in the first place. You know what I mean? That was polit political correctness on a on a on a different level, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. Sh BBC sugarcoating it as always, um, and, and they was a bit mental, weren't they? They, they I mean, they, 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 
they recruited, they forced people into that militia from a young age. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was, you know, they, they, they were caught in this thing whereby, you know, a lot of them had committed crimes elsewhere. A lot of them had done this. A lot of them fought at one side. Some of them had been trained by the British at one stage. Some of them have been in the RUF. Some of them had defected from here. So you had a hot melting pot of absolutely everybody in that country contained within that horseshoe was absolute lunacy. Like, do you know what I mean? Riddled with these people giving themselves names like, you know, you know, you know, Colonel Drop Dead and all this sort of ridiculous things that they called themselves and that, do you know what I mean? Just absolute beggars belief what was going on in there, really. And, you know, an environment where you think, you know, this is, this is anything can happen, you know. I... You know, I was making packs with friends of mine that, that basically said, if this does come on top and we lose this and you see me getting dragged off, well, just, just make sure you save one for me and, and slap me in the head before I go. Like, do you know what I mean? Because I don't want to be dragged through West Africa, used as an ashtray for six months and, and become someone's spittoon for, for another six months before they kill me in a gruesome way. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, <laughs> I, I actually took me Leatherman's out of my belt kit because I thought if I do get caught, I'm not having somebody playing about with that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, was it Fodim Kasse was their leader? Fode, Fode Kale. Fode Kale. Fode Kale, who went to prison, got back out again, um, and is now a devout Christian in the centre of Freetown. Well, that tells us a lot, doesn't it? That fucking we could have <laughs> we could have avoided that death and mutilation. Bloody hell. Yeah, and he's a he's a devout Christian now. He's a, he's a, I think he might even be a minister of some description. And he knocks about in he knocks about um in Freetown somewhere. Mm. I was hoping to go and interview him. I, I wanted to make a documentary over in, um, and we had it all teed up, but the COVID absolutely knocked it knocked it sideways. So I don't know, maybe I'll get the plan resurrected again one day and go over there and meet a few of these people. Because Moose is still about. Moose is still, he, I think he, he, he went up the ranks, Moose did. Uh, he was the he was the corporal that was in the was in the sin bin in the village. I mean, he got some treatment, that geezer did. And I've never seen somebody smiling as much in my whole life when they got him out of that pit. He really was the happiest man alive, and he'd had some proper treatment. He had he'd been through the mill. Um, yeah, there was yeah yeah. There's still a lot of people cutting them out over there, and I've got a friend who does palm oil over there. He um he employs quite a few people. He says everybody claims to have been there and all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like the badge of honour over there. It's like yeah, I was there. <laughs> that's their so, of the balcony. The bal- that's their balcony. That's their balcony. <laughs> isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Phil. Social media and the media, it's, it's, it's come at a good time in your life, hasn't it? It's all come good for you. It has, but I'm going to tell you now, it's not what I want to do. I don't like doing it. Um, and in terms of what happened to me at Sky News, I was, I was bullied at Sky News. This is insane. I was, I was actually picked on at Sky News. We made, and actually, my, well, you know, we made such a good job of that Big Phil's War that the likes of Alex Crawford and um, who's that other one, Ramsey, complained about it. Why are you using him? Why haven't you sent us? And I said to Eamon Holmes, didn't I? I said to Eamon Holmes, why, you know, when you watch football, Eamon, I know you like football, when you watch a pundit on television, who would you sooner listen to? Someone who's played football, like, say, Gary Lineker or Alan Shearer, or somebody who's talked about football. I said, it makes sense to have somebody who's, who's done it. So when it's a war zone, it's no different, is it? Would you sooner listen to the guy that's been there, seen it, done it, understands his way around, knows how to talk to the troops, or would you sooner see the person that's got their body armour on, ill-fitting their helmet over here somewhere, you know, cutting about, you know, going, oh, it's an explosion. <laughs> no, 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 it's not an explosion. That's sort of like, that's a mile away. Do you know what I mean? And I just, you know, it, it was to my own detriment. I did, I think I did too good a job for them because they, they all sort of like edged me out and farmed me out to that program called The Pledge and then upended me a little bit. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah. yeah well, you've got, got, you got the personality to carry it off because a, a lot of ex-military don't like the limelight at all, do they? They won't even come on a podcast. No, I'm yeah. I'm quite happy talking. I'm quite I'm quite happy, you know, doing this sort of stuff. I, I can do it. I don't like I say it's, it wouldn't be my, my my choice number one choice job, but you know, you've got to do what you've got to do, haven't you? Mm. Realistically now, I mean I'm the I'm the same shape as an egg. I, I shouldn't really be cutting around doing too much on battlefields, although I have been out of the Ukraine since since this all started. Uh but you know, I, I kept myself within my limitations and within my, within my capabilities, should I say, do you know what I mean? Mm. So yeah. Yeah. Um What's the what's what 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 do you do on ship? Do you do sort of presentations and stuff? Right. So when I do the cruise liners, I do a series of talks from sort of like talking about my. I talk about both my books, of course. I do it. I do a presentation on on born fearless and who dares wins. I then talk about. I do an anti piracy presentation. 
I do I do an Iraq presentation, an Afghanistan presentation. So I've, all, the, all the things that I've done, once I've done the sort of like main introduction speech, I then break them down. And, you know, typically a cruise, I'll give a bit of, I'll deliver about eight talks. Mm-hmm. And they're Do- all quite fun, to be honest. I try and keep them quite light-hearted. I've got a bit of media goes with it. I've got a bit of this, that, and the other. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's quite, they're quite good fun. Mm-hmm. And um, do you, uh, uh, you got to meet some great people, haven't you? Um, I've been really lucky. I mean, you know, to have people like, you know, a class bear as a friend now, do you know what I mean? And, and you know, I've met, I've met some extremely famous people, you know, I've been lucky, but, you know, I've met some extreme. I've met some extremely cool people who, who aren't famous whatsoever as well. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's, you know, when I think some of the coolest people I met on the planet, you know, with the original SAS guys, uh, of which there's very few of them left now, and you would speak to them. I could, I could never ever get enough time with them. Do you know what I mean? I would divert anything. I would, I would, I would rap on a TV interview all day to get ten minutes with with an, with an SAS veteran of, of that caliber. Do you know what I mean? Of the originals, you know, Rocky Blake, people like that. Unbelievable stories I had to tell. And I, I, I could sit with them for hours, you know what I mean? And all right, you know, I'm, stardom doesn't really impress me, never has. Do you know what I mean? I do know a lot of famous people, you know, but some of the best people I've met in my life have been these these veterans that I've met, you know, like Rocky and that. Absolute, absolute diamonds of the earth, do you know what I mean? Down to the earth, talk to you, no pretense about them, absolutely, you know, proper people. Proper people. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that would surprise a lot of people about SAS troopers is when you meet them, they're so <laughs> so down to earth. It's it's uh, it, it yeah, it's a, it, it's nice. Well, don't forget that, you know, the regimental ethos mentions you know humility. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's a, it's a massive. I think it's a massive part. It's humility. I probably stray wide of that bracket sometimes when I'm when I when I appear on these these TV programs and what have you. You know, you, you could say you know what you don't. But I don't ever, I don't, you know, I'll correct someone if they call me a hero. I don't, I don't like that sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? But it's the way I make my money now. So, it, it, you know, I've stepped into a world that now I've got to follow through, you know. But, yeah, there, there, there is some tremendously humble guys within that organisation. Tremendously humble guys. Yes. Yes. And yeah. I, I feel personally privileged to have served alongside and to have met many of them, like, you know. Mm. When I think that, you know, I've met, I've met people who, you know, the big thing when I was a kid, the great big thing was the Iranian embassy. Do you know what I mean? And when I think down and I sat down and drank with loads of guys who were there now, do you know what I mean? I think to myself, that's just, you have to pinch yourself. To me, that's like a small kid meeting a, meeting like David Beckham or someone. Do you know what I mean? I, I just, for me, meeting people of that calibre who, who you can sit down and have a, a conversation with on the same level because you've just sort of like, you've, you've, you've achieved something similar. You know, we both passed selection. That's that's a crazy thing to do, do you know what I mean? And when you when you're a young soldier and you're aspiring to do stuff like that, you never think that door will ever open to you, or you'll never think I'll never but yeah, the belief to get to that stage is is is, is what is what's kept me going, you know. Yeah, it's a funny old thing. I mean, I'll like probably like a lot of kids, I watch the you the I don't know, say kid, I can't remember how old I was, but I watched the Iranian embassy siege on telly like everybody did and and here I am, all these years later, chatting to people like Robin Horsfall, and and um, it's yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say, folks, is it's nice to be a it's 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 nice to be a I'll say in the media because that sounds like celebrity. What it's, I mean it's, is, it, do you know what? It's really nice to be able to pass on those. You know, I did I did a, I did an interview with um Chris Ryan. Great interview. Do you know what I mean? We had a, we had a great laugh. It's like. When you're in a position like you are yourself, Chris, you know, where, where you can actually sort of like pass that on to other people, it's great, isn't it? Because people can sit down and watch this and go, well, you know, I haven't had a chance to meet these people, but I am getting a chance to watch people interact with each other with no bullshit, no strings attached, you know what I mean? None of this sort of like, hi, I'm so-and-so. That's bollocks, I'm not, I'm Phil. <laughs> you know, so that, 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 that's why these podcasts, I think, are great because you get the real deal out of the person. There's no pretense. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not making anything up here. I'm not acting this out. Do you know what I mean? This wasn't scripted. This wasn't Sky News where they cut out what I say and edit things out that they don't like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I get people say, Chris, what, what do I need to prepare? What are you going to interview? And I said, don't do interviews, mate. <laughs> it's a chat between oppos. Um, 
do you prepare when you go and have a pint in the naffy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's it. You, you know, you just sit down and have a chat, don't you? And I, I mm. love chatting to people anyway. So, that, you know, this sort of thing I really like. And, you know, with the Force Radio stuff now, you know, that will expand into a, into a, into something that, that we do a lot more of this myself. Do you know what I mean? And I'll get people onto the show and things. And, yeah, I really enjoy it. I'm really, I am enjoying that side of life, meeting people. That That is one of the perks of the job. You know, I get to meet some really cool people. So, yeah, that's fun. If it's all right, I'm just going to take a moment to promote an evening that I've got upcoming. It suddenly hit me in a hazy blur the other morning as I was woke, waking up that I've met some incredible um, veterans from the Falklands conflict. We've chronicled some just legendary tales that would otherwise be lost to history. So we're going to do a talk night, friends, most likely in Birmingham. Um, we'll be looking at um, chaps like Nigel Spud Ely, uh, Tupara SAS, who was at Goose Green. Um, we've got John Mew, who went went um, went down on the Coventry, I believe it was. <laughs> I was getting my ships mu- me- um, me- messed up, uh, mixed up. We've got Captain Robert Lawrence, MC, who got shot through the head on tumble down some people will remember him from the the, the film the bbc did we we're gonna we just want a good evening relaxed drink in hand taking questions from the audience so stay tuned everyone it's probably going to be the 28th of may phil there's obviously an open invitation for you to to to, to come along um I know, um, I know, I know quite a few of them guys there. Yeah, yeah, Rob. Yeah, the the, the, the Rupert from Tumbledown, Rob. He's he's a great guy. He is, yeah. he's proper funny. He really is. He makes me laugh. He's all right. He's always trying to borrow money, though, Phil. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's got more money than God. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, and uh, Jeff Williams, one of my Marines brothers. Hello, Jeff. Um, he's just chatting to him this morning. He was four two commando on was it Harriet and Mount Kent? Yeah, I know Jeff as well. Yeah, he's done a lot of work, hasn't he, for the for the for the veterans' mental health. A lot of and, stuff. Yeah, a lot of charity stuff he does. Yeah, that. well, that's where we met, Phil. I don't know if you remember it. It was one of the Al Blackman, well, not charity, but <laughs> charity in a way. Uh, we met in Parliament Square one of those times. Um, that's right. I have still got the cardboard cutout of Al Blackman. He's in my shed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll, I want to give it to the Marines Museum or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, he's in my shed. Al Blackman's in my shed. And he's yeah. never escaped. <laughs> Friends at home, there's uh, Jeff. Jeff was an absolute powerhouse in 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 the Marine A, um, freeing Marine A basically after he he shot this um, uh, Taliban fighter um, and was in uh, in prison for it. And uh, Jeff had this cardboard cutout of Marine A, and he used to take it all around the country to get people to have a selfie with it to um you know to to promote the the uh well the I, I was campaign. there I was there on the final one where they where they said he was going to be let free mm. and Jeff Jeff got minging um I've got pretty Stephen and he went I'll just take it home and give it to me next time you see me I, I've probably not seen him since I don't think I mm. certainly don't take that cut out with me anywhere okay <laughs> <laughs> and Right, let's finish off, Phil. I know you're a busy man. Let, 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 let's get this book promoted. So your first book was Born Fearless, obviously. I've been reading Who Dares Wins this morning, or I've certainly what, what, read... What, what, book, what book's that, mate? <laughs> what book's that? <laughs> That's it. That's the one. There we go. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Who Dares <laughs> Wins? Uh, and don't be fooled by the cover. It's, about, it's really about mental health and my mm. mindset. It's not... The Who Dares Wins, the title really was... Because that's how I feel about, you know, some of the stuff I've done in my life. Not because it was the, the regimental motto, like, do you know what I mean? It was, it's how I felt. Yes. Yes. I'm always saying you get, you get, you get one life, you know, if you live it right, one's enough, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I wouldn't turn down another one, to be honest, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, mate, you'll live on, you'll live on vicariously <laughs> through, through all your works and all the, all the, the great message you put out to to young people so massive thank you um phil stay on the line so i can thank you properly but we'll put uh all friends we'll put all phil's links below so you can follow him on social media you can buy these cracking books um etc etc 
But Phil, massive thank you, brother. Really, really kind you come on the show. Oh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me yeah. on. I've, I've enjoyed it. Been a good I chat. was I was going to talk about the, your boxing, but we'll we'll take that next time. We can do that another day. We can do that another day. I'll, 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 until I get this egg off the front of me body, I ain't boxing anybody. But I am trying. I have put a thing together for Jake Paul, and it's gone through Frank Warren, who's Jake Paul's promoter in this country. And hopefully, hopefully, I'll get a shot at him. Whoa. I've there got a go. mate. I've got a mate, a bootneck mate, who's um, who's, who's uh, Ryan. People so will know. I've offered Jen- him out. I've also offered out Ross Kemp and all. I think Ross Kemp needs to step up to the plate. <laughs> Is that- go, Ross, if you're watching this, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mate. He actually was in the SES, though, wasn't he, Ross Kemp? Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, of course he was. Yeah, he was, on, he was on the balcony on every rope going and. <laughs> <laughs> he's hard because he told me <laughs> he is he is yes Phil massive thank you again to everybody oh much love to you all thanks for tuning in to another episode of Bought the T-Shirt podcast um, hope to see many of you on this on the 28th of May and uh, if you could like and subscribe that would be really kind see you <laughs>